Uh, glad to be here, excited to be here at uh, DevOps UK, the 10th edition of DevOps UK, DevOps UK so woo, that's, uh, it's really exciting to be here. Yeah, give some applause to the team, 10 years, 10 years already keeping it going, amazing. Um, and today I'd like to share with you how we gained observability into our CI CD pipeline and uh, how uh, you can too. Uh, I'll use Jenkins as the uh, uh, reference, but the focus is about the principles and about the patterns and how to achieve that. So it's applicable whether you use Jenkins or other CI CD pipelines or, or tools. And let's start with a day in the life of a developer on duty, on call. Who likes to uh, be on a developer on duty role? Show of hands. Oh, there are a few. Okay. That was supposed to be a, a null answer, but okay. So no one likes to do that. And uh, let's start by telling you how it used to be uh, in my company, Logs.io. So uh, the way it used to work is that uh, first thing in the morning, the uh, DOD, the developer on duty, I uh, used to uh, wake up, go to, the, uh, to Jenkins, uh, and check out the pipelines, the runs for the past few hours to check if, uh, if it's red, if there is obviously, most importantly, a red master, uh, and if you can finish your coffee quietly or if you can quickly uh, need to go and start investigating. That's in essence. Um, and if something went wrong, obviously, then you needed to go in, you needed to go over the different runs one by one, and then starting to figure out um, what failed, which failed, where it failed, why it failed, and so on. And uh, one by one, I mean, because we had runs, of obviously, for the back end, we have the app, the, the front end, we have smoke tests, so many different runs, and you need to start comparing them, you need to start understanding the pattern, and, uh, and start figuring things out across the branches, across the runs, and so on. Uh, also, uh, if you wanted to compare things to historical runs, historical data, we didn't have that, so understanding the patterns uh, historically was also a, a problem. So just to give you a sense of what kinds of questions we wanted to ask, probably questions that each and every one of you would have asked uh, that it took us too long to answer, uh, things such as, did all runs uh, fail on the same step? Makes sense. Uh, did all runs fail for the same reason? And how many failed on that reason? Uh, did the failure occur on a specific branch? Uh, did it occur on a specific machine? Uh, which failed most? And also in terms of performance, if suddenly you see a spike, something takes longer, duration, latency, is that good, is that not good? Uh, what is the benchmark of good and not good? Uh, so these are the sorts of questions it took us too, uh, too long to answer, and we understand, we realize that we needed to improve on. Uh, and remember these questions, we'll, we'll get back to them soon. My name is Dusan Horvitz. I am the principal developer advocate at uh, Logs.io. Logs.io provides a cloud-native observability platform that's based on popular open source tools, such as uh, OpenSearch, Prometheus, Jaeger, OpenTelemetry, and others. Uh, I'm also uh, a newly nominated uh, CNCF ambassador. We have other ambassadors here in the room. That's a picture from last month's KubeCon when uh, it was announced. So, uh, uh, pretty cool to see uh, fellow ambassadors here in the, in the, in the audience. Uh, and I'm an advocate of open source. I co-organize uh, the local CNCF chapter in Tel Aviv, where I'm based, also DevOps days, uh, Kubernetes community days, and many other things. So if you come by uh, Tel Aviv, do check it out. Uh, I also have a podcast called Open Observability Talks uh, that talks about DevOps, open source observability. So if you're into podcasts and into these topics, check it out in your favorite podcast app. Um, and you can find me everywhere, at Horowitz, Twitter, Mastodon, uh, whatnot. So uh, if you're tweeting something out of this one, uh, feel free to tag me. Um, and let's go back to uh, what I said before, that we needed to improve on things. So, but before saying that, the very basic question is what uh, you need to improve on. And as basic as it sounds, I see too often uh, people jumping into the solution without really defining what they need to improve on. Uh, and for that, I'd li I, I like the Dora metric uh, framework. Who, who is familiar with the Dora metrics, by the way? Okay, we have like 30, 35% here. So um, I want to devote uh, a few moments because I think it's, it's important. Uh, Dora metrics is, uh, started off as a research, um, essentially to understand what makes high performance teams. And then at 2018, they published a book uh, called the Accelerate book that um, uh, where, where they identified essentially four 
basic metrics for uh, performing for a high performing team for measuring the performance of software development. Uh, and I, I added a QR code here at the bottom or a short link if you want to scan it uh, for a 101 on, uh, on uh, Dora metrics. I think it's a, it's a very important topic to answer. I don't, I don't have time too much now, but I want to just give you the gist to prepare for the next uh, uh, improvement. Uh, four metrics. One uh, is uh, deployment frequency, which essentially measures how often an organization successfully releases to production. Secondly, there's the lead time uh, uh, for changes or cycle time, sometimes it's called cycle time, uh, which is the amount of time it takes uh, a commit to reach all the way into production. Uh, then there's the change failure rate, uh, which measures the percentage of deployments that uh, uh, fail in production. And lastly, the time to restore service or MTTR, uh, mean time to recovery, which is how long it takes to recover from uh, a failure in production. So these are the four metrics. Um, and they're very, very different. And this is why I, I, it's very important to pinpoint what exactly you want to improve on. You can even see that the first two are more about the velocity and the uh, deployment frequency, lead time for changes, and the, the latter two are more about the, the stability, the change failure rate, the mean time to recovery, how reliable your, uh, uh, you are. So very different. In our case, uh, what we needed to improve on is the lead time for changes the time it takes a commit to reach all the way into production, which in our case was too high, took too long, and was holding us back. So once we uh, understood what we want to improve on, then let's talk about how uh, we do that. And uh, what we do for a living is, uh, is observability. So for us, it was very clear at that point that we're lacking observability. The same observability that we had in production, uh, in, the, in the production environment, we needed something along the lines for the CI/CD that we didn't have, uh, the neglected child, so to speak. Um, so, and as I mentioned, we use Jenkins, although everything I'm saying here uh, is equally applicable also for other frameworks, but we use Jenkins, and uh, I want to say a word, because Jenkins does provide uh, some sort of observability out of the box, to be, to be honest and to be fair. Uh, and we could, in Jenkins, you could enter into the pipeline run. You can look and see uh, the steps for each step, the duration that the step took. So there is a lot of things that you can do there. We even wire Jenkins with our own uh, Slack. We use Slack as the organizational tool. So you, go, you got notification and things like that. But that wasn't good enough for us. And the reason is that we wanted uh, a way to monitor uh, not just the individual run and its uh, specific steps. We wanted to uh, be able to monitor aggregated and filtered information across uh, pipeline runs, across branches, uh, across machines, uh, and see all the picture in a time scale that we choose with our own filters, just like we do in production. So with that in mind, we set out uh, with, the, with the project, and the project was uh, with these following requirements. The first was to have a dashboard and aggregated views, so we can see, as I mentioned, across pipelines, across runs, across branches, across mach machines. Uh, secondly, was to have historical data for historical pipeline runs, to be able to understand the trends uh, and to identify patterns more easily. Thirdly, reports and alerts, so that we can automate as much as possible. It was too manual the way that we uh, used to do things. And last but not least is test performance, uh, to be able to view flaky tests and uh, to understand the impact on the overall uh, pipeline uh, uh, time. Who suffers from flaky tests here with a show of hands? OK, so you know the pain, and you know that this is a definite uh, something that you want observability into. So now that we understand the requirements and what we want to achieve, let's talk about how to achieve that. And essentially, it takes four steps. Collect, store, visualize, and report. Four steps. In terms of the tech stack, uh, we've had a lot of experience with the Elk stack, Elasticsearch, Kibana. Who uses uh, Elasticsearch here? And who's familiar, not using maybe, but familiar with the technology? OK, we have, uh, we have some uh, who are familiar. Uh, uh, 
technical stack, essentially it's a, it's a, time, it's a, a database for storing uh, logs, in this case, or, or events, or something that is uh, semi-structured, maybe even unstructured, textual-based. Uh, this is the, the data store, and Kibana is the visualization tool on top of that for, for analysis. And the language that is used is Lucene, for those who are familiar with the project Lucene, Apache Lucene, uh, that's the engine underneath. So uh, we went about using uh, the Elk stack back in the day. Uh, actually, since then, we moved over to uh, OpenSearch. Uh, who is familiar with OpenSearch? OK, cool. We had a, an earlier lecture here about OpenSearch as well with, uh, with Kafka and stuff like that. It's interesting to see. This is uh, Elasticsearch is no longer open source, unfortunately. They relicensed it. So OpenSearch started as a fork of Elasticsearch and Kibana, and now it's an independent project. But if you're familiar with Elasticsearch and Kibana, you'll feel very familiar with uh, OpenSearch. So uh, if I say OpenSearch, uh, you can think about it as Elasticsearch and Kibana. So that's where we started our journey to observability. And let's see these four steps, collect, store, visualize, and report with this tech stack. So first thing first is collect. And for that, we instrumented our uh, Jenkins pipeline to collect all the relevant information we could out of the pipeline and put it in environment variables. Uh, what kinds of information? You can see some examples here. The branch, the commit SHA, the machine IP, the run type. Run type being uh, whether it's uh, a scheduled run or uh, triggered by merge to master or by push to a uh, branch. Uh, uh, fail steps, that duration, uh, a run type, if it's flaky, if it's uh, uh, passed uh, or so on. So anything, that the tip here is anything that you can take out of your pipeline, collect it. That, that's going to be useful. That's the, the first phase. And after collect comes store. And for that, we added uh, a new step at the end of the pipeline. You can see it uh, marked here, the summary step, where we ran a, a command to collect all this information from the environment variables. We constructed a JSON with all this information and uh, persisted it to Elasticsearch and now to OpenSearch. That's, uh, that's in essence. Um, and also, to be fair with Jenkins, for those who are familiar, Jenkins does have some built-in persistency capabilities, okay? So, uh, and we did try them out, and they weren't good for us, and I want to say why, in case you're considering your path as well, uh, some points to consider. So, by default, uh, Jenkins keeps all the builds on the Jenkins machines, on the servers, and... Uh, then, uh, obviously, this burdens these machines, the, the critical path. So this is a, a first problematic thing. And then uh, you also need to limit how many builds you're going to uh, keep and for how many days. And you start juggling with this, uh, with this uh, uh, sort of persistence uh, layer. And that wasn't what we wanted. We wanted to uh, do it in our control, to control the, uh, the duration, the retention, and very importantly, to do that off of the um, uh, critical path off of the Jenkins machines. That was one. And secondly, we wanted the full power, analytical powers that we can get in production, like we do for those who know uh, Kibana and, and the Elasticsearch and so on. We wanted the ability to run these, all these fancy queries that are not necessarily readily available when you use Jenkins. So that's a word about the uh, store phase. And after store comes visualize. And here once uh, all the pipeline data is uh, in Elasticsearch. It's very easy to build Kibana dashboards uh, out of it uh, uh, and visualizations. And if you use OpenSearch, then OpenSearch dashboards is the equivalent of uh, Kibana or the fork, what started off as a fork of Kibana project. Uh, so that, these are the tooling, but let's now talk about the visualizations. What, what kinds of visualizations uh, should be included in such, as, uh, in such a, a dashboard? And for that, let's go back to the pain points and the questions that I talked about before. If you remember, uh, questions such as, did all runs fail uh, uh, on the same step? Did all runs fail for the same reason? Uh, did the failures occur on a specific branch? Did they occur on a specific machine? Um, and uh, if there is a, suddenly a spike in the latency, is that normal? And what's the benchmark? These are the sorts of questions that dictated the types of visualizations you want to include in our dashboard. And the reason that I'm emphasizing is it because it's not a copy-paste necessarily in your case. I'm, I'm teaching you here principles 
but the, the guideline is to understand what kind of observability you need in your systems, what kinds of questions you want to answer to be able to answer, and then let that guide you into the types of observability you need to implement and the type of dashboards you want to implement. Okay, so this is, this is I, I actually wrote a, um, a guide to uh, uh, designing dashboards for, for, uh, for developers and DevOps. That was the very basic principle of them. Before I'm teaching you all the rest of the things, first figure out what you want to uh, understand and let that guide top down the dashboard. So um, uh, let's, let's see some examples to, to uh, understand what I'm talking about. And the first thing, obviously, is the top, uh, top level view, top line status of uh, your, uh, your uh, system to check the stability, uh, how stable our pipeline is. For that, uh, very simply, uh, uh, success versus failure rates uh, can be visualized as a table view globally or on a specific time range in a graph, depending on your style. And very easy to see, a very quick view, how healthy uh, our pipeline is. And if you can finish your morning's coffee, or you need to uh, jump uh, right into the dashboard. So that was our, our top line uh, uh, view. Um, another example, finding problematic steps, as I mentioned before. So visualizing failures segmented by uh, steps. And again, depending on table, uh, sorted table or, or view, very easy to see uh, suddenly uh, a spiking step that uh, probably is there's something wrong, something problematic with this step. Uh, another example, detecting problematic build machines. Uh, again, sorted, very easy to see. One, two, and suddenly a machine with 12 uh, counts of failures. Um, and that actually saved us a lot of time uh, going into and debugging and looking for bugs in the released code. Instead, when you see such a machine, you just kill the machine, let the autoscaler spin up a new one, and start fresh. And it may start clean, and many times this would solve the problem. And um, how many people suffer from problems that are environmental and not part of the code itself, that ruin the, the builds? Okay, so, so quite, quite a few, so you know the problem. And actually, this problem was so frequent that this was just the first step, and I'll go back to that problem later to show how we get more observability into that type of a problem of environmental versus code-based uh, issues in the pipelines. So uh, last example, uh, duration per step. We talked about the benchmark, understanding what's the benchmark. So before, as I mentioned, when we collected the CICD pipeline, we, we, uh, we were able to go into a specific run in Jenkins and see how long that individual step took. But that's a specific run. When you want to understand if something is anomalous, uh, you, you want to see the trends. So these are the sorts of uh, visualizations we use for aggregated information across, uh, across pipeline runs, across branches, uh, and of course, you can filter that and you can uh, uh, decide on the time window and so on. So uh, in summary, these were a few examples of visualizations. But as I said, you'll, you'll create your own based on your questions and your needs uh, uh, and your task. So that was the visualize step. And after visualize comes report. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, what we used to do is to go manually, the developer on duty went in, into Jenkins, and needed to remember to see that. Now he or she gets, is getting a, a start of day report right into Slack in a dedicated Slack channel uh, that shows the, uh, uh, the status uh, with a link, obviously, to the dashboard. But something very nice, as you can see here, you can actually, actually have, you have a snapshot of the dashboard embedded within the notification itself, which means that uh, you can have a look, as I mentioned, like the uh, top line uh, status, and you can see if you can finish your morning's coffee or not, uh, even before going into the dashboard itself. Um, so that's the, the daily report. But of course, you can also build custom alerts based on all the data that we collected in the first uh, step and uh, all the, the aggregated information. Uh, you can do it as, as complex uh, 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 query uh, or alert as you wish. Uh, you could say uh, uh, if the sum of failures goes above X or uh, the average duration goes above Y, dispatch an alert. So really, anything that you would ex uh, uh, express as a Lucene query, uh, and Kibana, open such dashboards or whatnot, and manually, you can also automate as an alert to get alerted on. And the automation is the, the important thing here. And that, by the way, is, is built uh, uh, using an alerting mechanism we built on top of uh, the Elk stack and, and OpenSearch. Um, 
One last word about that. I, I, I'm giving in the example of, uh, of Slack because this is what we use in our engineering and our operations teams. But uh, you can choose, of course, your own, uh, VictorOps, uh, PagerDuty, uh, MS Teams, whatnot, even custom webhooks. So it's really up to you. Uh, Slack is just the example because this is what we use uh, internally with our engineering. So that was about building the first step of building observability into our Jenkins uh, pipelines. But CI/CD is more than just Jenkins. So what else? What else are we missing that we haven't attended to from the previous requirements? Can anyone remember? The flaky tests. We wanted to be able to see, to analyze flaky tests and test performance. So uh, that's beyond Jenkins itself. And uh, we added that following the same process, collect, store, uh, visualize and report. So for the collect, we collected all the relevant information from our test run and stored it in Elasticsearch. And then we created a Kibana dashboard or an OpenSearch dashboard. Uh, and you can see here the example. You can see here a, a failure count, failure rate, moving averages, a, a failed test by branch over time, uh, flaky test suites over time, all the things that you'd like in order to analyze flaky tests and test performance in your, uh, in your system. And as before, uh, visualize, after visualize comes a report, and we follow the same pattern. We actually uh, created these Slack notifications where you get in a dedicated Slack channel for uh, build alerts. We get a snapshot of the dashboard and uh, for people to be able to quickly analyze and troubleshoot the problems. So uh, that's about uh, uh, the build alerts. Uh, another very important point is the openness and flexibility. Uh, uh, different teams approach, once they had the data in Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, it was very easy for different teams to create different visualizations over that same data uh, using their own needs, their own preferences, their own styles. Uh, I took an extreme example of a, an entirely different team that actually didn't like graphs and liked only the table views uh, over that same data. And it's as powerful and that's as uh, flexible, just a different style. So this is something that is very important, especially. Is there anyone here that is from a platform engineering team? Anyone? One, two? OK, we have, we have a few. So I've been talking about platform engineering quite extensively in the, in the past uh, uh, period because it's become suddenly fashionable. And one of, the tips, one of the tips that I give platform engineering teams always is the flexibility. Uh, I was in an interview the other day, and someone asked me, OK, so what's new, and why is that different than PaaS, platform as a service that we knew, I don't know, uh, uh, 10 years ago? And the difference, as I see that, is actually the flexibility. It's not off the shelf third party that everyone needs to align to. It's not that opinionated. It needs to be flexible enough to accommodate different teams' styles, needs, preferences. Uh, so in this case, in following this pattern, you would allow, you'll still consolidate the data, but still allow the flexibility and openness for different teams to take different approaches in their visualizations. So just, just a note about that. Um, and, and let's summarize how we gained observability so far. So what we've seen is um, that we've instrumented the Jenkins pipeline uh, to collect all the relevant uh, run data and put it, stored it in uh, environment variables. Then at the end of the pipeline, we added a step, a summary step, where we ran a script to collect all these, uh, this information, created a JSON, and uh, persisted it, stored it in Elasticsearch or OpenSearch. Then we created visualizations, Kibana visualizations on top of it. And lastly, we created reports and alerts on top of that data. That's uh, the process. Again, collect, store, visualize, and report. So what's next? That was just the first step. The next step is uh, uh, that we wanted to investigate the long, perform uh, the long uh, latency of certain runs, the performance of our, uh, of our specific uh, pipeline runs. And I showed you before how we visualized per step uh, aggregated uh, duration, so you could identify long running steps in an aggregate view, but you couldn't uh, see uh, how the run builds up, the, the, how it stacks up, the sequence. Uh, and for that, we actually realized that the perfect thing is distributed, uh, uh, distributed tracing. Uh, and 
The nice thing is, is about since we worked with Jenkins, Jenkins actually has uh, knows how to emit traces, just like it can emit logs and metrics. So we had it out of the box in Jenkins, and we decided to visualize our jobs and pipeline executions uh, with distributed tracing. Uh, how many people here, uh, who, who is familiar with distributed tracing, with a show of hands? OK, so uh, not everyone. Uh, so I'll, I'll actually, last, last week, I was here with some of the speakers and uh, in, a, in a different conference here in London, uh, WTF is SRE, and I had a dedicated session uh, just about uh, distributed tracing. Uh, so I'll give you just a gist of that. Um, distributed tracing essentially is a method for uh, pinpointing where failures occur and what causes poor performance in your systems. And it's in your production system, so it's not specifically for uh, CI-CD, uh, for release pipelines, it's actually for primarily for, uh, for production environments, distributed systems, uh, microservice architectures. If you think about uh, uh, microservice architectures where every request goes through a sequence of interacting microservices, and then suddenly that endpoint fails, or suddenly there's a low latency on that endpoint, uh, you want to ask a question such as, okay, where is the error coming from? What's the root cause? Or if the, w w what causes the performance degradation? Uh, where's my critical path? These are the sorts of questions that distributed tracing comes to solve, okay? Um, and the way it works is that each call in that sequence, or in our case, each step in the CI-CD pipeline run, uh, emits, generates and emits a span. A span, you can think about a span as a structured log that uh, contains uh, the trace ID, contains the uh, start time, the duration, and some additional context. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the system emits it, and then there is a backend that collects all these spans, reconstructs the full trace based on causality, and then visualizes it typically with these timeline views, these gun charts, uh, or, or, uh, or graphs. These are the typical things. So, this is, in a nutshell, what distributed tracing is about. And now that we understand what's distributed tracing, let's see how to add it into our CI-CD pipeline. And the same flow, collect, store, visualize, report. So for the first step, collect, uh, we decided to use an open telemetry collector. Who's familiar with open telemetry? Raise your hands. Yay, I think about 50%, that's amazing. That's really amazing. So a word for those who are not familiar with open telemetry, it's an open source project under the CNCF. I'm a CNCF ambassador, so you'll hear a lot about CNCF. Apologies for that, but uh, it comes with the territory. Uh, it's an open source under the CNCF uh, and CNCF incubation project, uh, which is essentially a f an, op uh, an observability framework for generating and collecting telemetry data across traces, metrics, and logs in a uniform uh, standard manner. So it's not just for traces, uh, but in this case, uh, in this context, I, I'm showing that in the context of traces, but it's a uniform uh, uh, one framework to rule them all, if you'd like. Um, uh, and there's a, a QR code here. I don't know if you can see all of you, but uh, for those who can't see, there's a QR code for a, a beginner's guide to open telemetry. If you are interested, uh, I wrote uh, an extensive one, including subguides per language, so a Java uh, subguide, uh, a Go, uh, a, a Python, whatnot, that you can start with the instrumenting your applications with open telemetry. So uh, for the collect phase, uh, what you need to do once we decided on open telemetry collector, these are the steps you need to take. First, you need to set up an open telemetry collector if you don't already have one running uh, in your environment. And then you need to install the Jenkins open telemetry plugin. Very easy, through the web UI. Um, and then you have the, the link here for the uh, plugin. And then you need to configure the uh, Jenkins open telemetry plugin to send the, uh, to the, uh, the trace data to the open telemetry collector uh, endpoint on over uh, OTLP over a, a gRPC uh, protocol. That's just a matter of a few configurations, and you're good to go. That's the collect phase. Now, after collect comes store. And um, for the back end, we uh, chose to use Jaeger. Uh, who's familiar with the Jaeger project? OK, a bit less than, uh, than open telemetry. Uh, Jaeger, uh, a word about Jaeger, another open source project. Uh, it's an, actually a graduated project of the CNCF. Uh, it's a very popular open source tool for uh, distributed tracing. 
uh, and we used Jaeger to monitor, in, our co in my company, to monitor the production environment. So we did the same with, uh, with the CI-CD pipeline. And in fact, we, we even have our own managed Jaeger, uh, so we use that. But it works everything I'm showing here works just the same if you install your own, if you use managed. Uh, in fact, if you do ins want to install your own, I actually uh, wrote a guide to deploying Jaeger on Kubernetes in production. You have the short link here, uh, just to get you started there. Um, so, as we use Jaeger for the backend, we need to configure OpenTelemetry Collector. Uh, so, OpenTelemetry Collector, I mind you, collects uh, the span data, reconstructs the traces, and then it forwards that to the backend. In this case, uh, Jaeger, it has a, an exporter, a Jaeger exporter in this case. You just plug it in, and that's all you need. Uh, and by the way, if you use other tools, other uh, distributed tracing backends, OpenTelemetry Collector offers many other exporters to many other tools. Just plug in the the right exporter for OpenTelemetry, and it will export the data to your backend of choice. So uh, that was the store phase, and after store comes visualize. And for visualize, uh, it's actually simpler in this case because Jaeger UI comes with, with built-in visualizations. You don't need to start composing your own uh, dashboards uh, as in uh, OpenSearch and in uh, Kibana. Um, and, uh, what you can see here, this is the most popular view, the timeline view. You can see on the left-hand side the, uh, uh, this uh, indented the tree structure of the calls, and on the right-hand side you see the gun chart. And essentially it's very easy to see the pipeline sequence. You can see uh, how much time was spent on each, on each span. Each line here is a span, uh, uh, which spans ran in parallel and which run, ran sequentially if you want to optimize. Uh, you can see where the critical path of your application is. Suddenly you see a span, a long-running span that nothing else can run in parallel to it. This is probably something that you'd be wanting to look into. So um, uh, this is a way to see where time is spent in your run and where you would like to optimize very, very easily uh, on the visual. Uh, that's the timeline view, the most popular in, in tracing, but Jaeger, uh, besides the timeline view, offers other views, uh, such as uh, uh, this one, the, uh, uh, the graph where you can see the, uh, the calls, which, uh, which uh, span called which, uh, which, in our case, which step called which. Uh, you can see here others like uh, trace statistics, span table. Uh, flame graph is very interesting. Uh, we added that to the Jaeger project very recently, pretty cool for those who, are, uh, who dig the uh, flame graph type of, uh, of thing. So different visualizations uh, that Jaeger offers out of the box without you needing to uh, start uh, tweaking with that. Um, so that was about adding traces to our Jenkins runs, okay? But as I said before, CICD is more than Jenkins. So what else? What else could we want to uh, achieve with distributed tracing in our case? So later you can add uh, instrumentation to Maven, to Ansible, to other tools uh, to get uh, finer granularity uh, of the traces and the steps in your build. So uh, for example, in here what you see in yellow, these are Maven, uh, the Maven build steps. So what before used to be one black box long running span, suddenly you can open it up and see the breakdown into the different uh, Maven build uh, steps, uh, each one with its own respective context and information uh, to, uh, uh, to troubleshoot. So, very useful. Um, and of course, uh, just like I said before, you can also create reports and alerts on top of this data, just like as we did before. So, uh, 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 all the same, the same process goes here. So that was about uh, using distributed tracing to add observability into our pipeline runs, and especially for performance uh, investigations of long-running uh, uh, runs. What's next? So remember we talked about uh, the problem of environmental uh, issues causing uh, builds to break, right? Uh, and we showed before in, uh, in OpenSearch and Kibana how we uh, segmented uh, by, uh, bi uh, by machine, and then we figured out machines that were problematic. That was a, a nice first step, but we wanted much more than that. Uh, and then we decided to monitor metrics uh, uh, from the Jenkins servers and from the environment, the system, the containers, the JVM, essentially anything that could uh, uh, fail irrespective of the released code. 
and uh, we decided to create observability into that, uh, following the same flow, collect, store, visualize, and report. So let's start with the first phase, the first step, uh, collect. And for that, we used uh, Telegraph uh, for the collect phase. Uh, we used Telegraph in production at the time, and we, want, we, used that, we chose to use that here as well. Uh, Telegraph, uh, for those who are not uh, familiar, it's an open source. Is it, how many are familiar with Telegraph? Show of hands. OK, so not many. So Telegraph essentially is an open source by Influx Data. Uh, those who know Influx DB, usually it comes as part of that stack, the tech stack. Uh, and one of Telegraph's uh, strong suits is its uh, plugins. So I'll, I'll mention a couple of plugins here. So I gave you the link to the uh, plugins library. You can, uh, you can check them out uh, there. Um, and for the collect phase, uh, the first thing is to configure Jenkins to expose metrics in a Prometheus format. Why Prometheus format? We use Prometheus formats extensively for our production environment. That's how we monitor. That's how we collect time series data. So we follow the same for our CI CD. Um, and that's a matter of, again, a simple configuration in the Jenkins UI. You go to the Manage Plugins, Install, Select Prometheus. That's about it. Um, and then, of course, you need to install Telegraph if you don't already have one, and uh, make sure that it scrapes metrics off of the uh, Jenkins servers with the Prometheus input uh, plugin. Okay, Prometheus input plugin. If you look in the library, look for the Prometheus input plugin. That's the first phase. Collect. You're good to go. Next up after collect is store, and for that, uh, I mentioned as before. I, I mentioned that we use Prometheus extensively for our uh, uh, production environment to monitor our production environment, and we follow the same for the CI/CD. So uh, we have our own even Prometheus as a service, which we used in our case for the storage. But everything that I show here is equally uh, the same steps, whether you use a Prometheus or a Prometheus-compatible backend, regardless of the, the provider. Um, and essentially, you have two options. Uh, you need to configure Telegraph, obviously, to send the metrics to uh, your backend, to the Prometheus or Prometheus-compatible backend. And you have two options for that. You can do that in push mode or in pull mode. Um, pull mode is the standard. That's the default for Prometheus. So if you run a, a Prometheus out of the box in one of your servers, it, the pull mode will be uh, the way. And in order to do that, you need to uh, configure Telegraph to expose a slash matrix endpoint from your server that Prometheus can then approach and, and scrape the data, uh, the pull the data out of the uh, Telegraph. And if you want to do that, you need to use the Prometheus Client Output plugin. Okay? Prometheus Client Output plugin, if that's your path. The other option is in push mode for Telegraph to push the time series data to the backend. Uh, and if you want to do that, you use the HTTP Output plugin. Okay? HTTP Output plugin. But because it's a generic HTTP uh, uh, Output plugin, you need to set the data format to Prometheus Remote Write. So it will be in a Prometheus format. That's it. That's, that's for the storing. And then you have all the time series data, all the metrics stored in a Prometheus uh, format in your backend. And after that, we go to the visualize step. And once you have the data in Prometheus, very easy to build Grafana dashboards on top of the, uh, on top of the data. Um, and I'm, here I'll show you again examples of visualizations. You determine your own visualizations that work for you. But these are the ones that worked well for us. First and foremost, very importantly, is the filters. You can see that we can filter by uh, build type, by branch, by machine ID, by build number. So it's very easy to uh, zoom in and triage your, uh, your issues with, that, with these filters. Uh, and you can monitor in this example, these are the system-related uh, uh, metrics like CPU, memory, disk usage, load, trends over time, and so on. This is the, the system uh, monitoring. Uh, we did the same with the container. Uh, monitoring the Docker containers, uh, where you can uh, see the container CPU, container memory, I.O., network, uh, inbound, outbound, uh, disk usage, and of course, running, stopped, uh, 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 paused containers by Jenkins machine. So you can map the containers, the problem with the containers, with the uh, Jenkins uh, machine. And as I said, you can filter by uh, to investigate a specific machine, a specific build, or a build type or a branch, or a combination. So makes it very, very easy to, to, uh, uh, to root cause the issues. 
Um, uh, you can also uh, show the JVM metrics of the, uh, on the Jenkins machine, the usual suspects, the, the uh, thread count, heap memory usage, garbage collection duration, the things that you would like to troubleshoot if it's a JVM uh, a root cause of the issue in the pipeline. Uh, and of course, you can monitor the Jenkins uh, itself, the Jenkins nodes, the Jenkins queues, the jobs, the executors uh, of Jenkins. So you can see here the, the queues, the count of uh, the, the status breakdown, how many buildable, how many blocked, how many pending, how many stuck, uh, the jobs, uh, the breakdown by job status, how many aborted, how many failure, uh, not built, success, unstable, whatnot. Um, and uh, actually, these were pr proving to be so so uh, so useful, and some of our users actually asked to, to for them to get the dashboard. So we made it available as a as a built-in pre-built dashboard that they can in one click install that and play with that. That, that proved to be very uh, very p popular one. Um, and as before, once you have the time series data, it's very easy to uh, uh, also define uh, alerts on top of the on top of the metrics on top of the time series data. So. Um, I want to summarize what we've seen. I know it, it's, it was a lot, but uh, le so let's wrap up and see what we've seen. First, and very, very importantly, we realized that we were very good in observability in our production environment, and we neglected the CI/CD uh, pipeline side of the house. So my first advice, uh, written in blood, as they say, treat your CI/CD like you treat your prod, your production environment. Same way that you uh, ran all these tools uh, to, to investigate, use the same, and even use the same tools. So use Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, Prometheus, Grafana, uh, uh, Jaeger, whatnot for your production environment. Just reuse the same tooling, not to reinvent the wheel, to make it simple, but aim at the same level of observability for your CI CD. Uh, recapping on what we want, uh, we embarked on this project with these uh, requirements. So we wanted the dashboard to see aggregated and filtered views. Uh, from several pipelines across uh, runs, branches, in our own time range of choice. Uh, that was the first goal. Secondly, was the historical data. It was very important for us to uh, uh, be able to analyze historical data and also to persist that data off of the Jenkins machine, off of the critical path, with a control of our own uh, persistence, our own uh, choice of uh, retention of the data, and so on. Uh, thirdly, we wanted reports and alerts to be able to automate as much as possible. And lastly, we wanted to see and view flaky tests and test performance and their impact on our pipelines. So this is, these are the goals and the recap on how we achieve that with different uh, means. Um, and again, four steps. If there's one thing that to take out of this talk, take this. It's very simple, four steps to uh, reach uh, observability into your CI CD. Collect store, visualize, and report. Uh, just to recap, collecting is, collect is the, to instrument your pipelines for events, for uh, state, for metrics, for traces, uh, and then store and visualize depending on the type of data, whether it's a uh, time series data, events and logs, uh, it will be probably Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, time series data, Prometheus and Grafana, what I showed, Jaeger for traces and so on, and then alerts and reports to automate uh, the things. Uh, of course, if you can get all of that uh, under one platform, that's great. If you don't need to spread, then the hint, of course, my company, Logs.io, provides that as one unified platform. So if you want a community edition or a free trial or whatnot, I added a special uh, QR code here for the, uh, for the uh, special uh, free trial. But even if not, remember, try to align with the same tool chain that you have for production. Don't reinvent the wheel. Try to converge on the tooling and uh, not to add head headache while, while doing that. And let's top line, what, what we gained out of this. So the most important thing, remember the Dora metrics, we gained significant improvement in our lead time for changes, the time it takes a build to reach production. That's the most important thing. Secondly, while at it, we improved significantly the quality of life for developers and duty. It's much less of a pain these days to uh, be on call. Uh, and thirdly, it's based on the same open source stack that we know and love. So uh, we, we talked about uh, uh, OpenSearch, OpenTelemetry, Jaeger, Prometheus, all of these. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, see more information about that, I wrote a guide to CI-CD observability. You have the QR code or the short link here. So everything that I talked about here, but in a greater extent with, with references and everything, you can find this uh, guide. And um, 
I just wanted to say one final note uh, before you wrap up. Um, you probably saw that I use Telegraph for metrics and not open telemetry, although I mentioned that open telemetry is actually a project that can handle different types of telemetry data. The reason that I did that uh, is because back in the day when we did this, uh, open telemetry was GA, was generally available for traces, but not for metrics. So uh, it was still experimental, so we decided to go with Telegraph. But if you start your project today, I'd actually advise you to look into open telemetry also for metrics. Uh, actually, we're looking to align with open telemetry on the metric side as well. Uh, and in general, I'm a, a proponent of, uh, of aligning uh, open telemetry as the standard way of collecting metrics, uh, logs, and traces for uh, CI/CD observability. I even uh, submitted an OTEP and uh, extension proposal for open telemetry. You, you have the link at the bottom here uh, about making it a first tenant for open telemetry. So if you are open source uh, aficionados and if you want to get involved or uh, things, check out this uh, GitHub uh, PR and, uh, and get involved or reach out to me. Uh, and with that, I think I gave this one as well. So uh, I'm Dotan Horvitz. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>